Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Hard Mode Challenge. In the last episode, the future of our bloodlines was saved when we finally saw some females born in our nests again. Sagittaria was the first one, and thanks to her lovely genetics, I think she's going to make some pretty good warrior babies. We might even have her breed with one of the many friendly Baryenas we have off in the grass. Our first one is already fully grown, but our second one that we ran into just yesterday is just getting to know a little bean. Hopefully he'll be able to uh, bring him over to the rest of the tribe so we can use his genetics too. Because if we could breed some of those Baryena claws into our lines, then I don't think even the killer Baryena could stand in our way. We did spy that guy lurking around in the tall grass, chasing after some of the rogues, so we're being very, very cautious as we move our creatures to the north. We do need to bring Grindylo up here, though, to uh, munch on some of these medicines, because he did take quite a bit of damage yesterday from that Baryena attack. So he can uh, chat it up with his brother Barker again, who I'm sure was very, very worried about him. They haven't truly seen each other since they were babies, I believe, so they have quite a bit of catching up to do. We do have some bunnies still uh, lurking out in the tall grass though, so maybe Barker, you could be the one to jump over here and try to surprise it. Since he is in the tall grass right now, we might be able to confuse it as Pecan digs up some of the roots for the extra food. We'll have Sagittaria make her way over to the Baryena's as well, the Baryena's lair, as she unveils the bunnies in the process. I believe that means her sister Zara should be able to take it down for us. Excellent, so Crow can go up there on his very last turn and maybe get the food. Maybe it would be a better idea for him to pick the berries. We don't want those pesky bunnies stealing all of them on us. So Zara, you should be able to pick up your food on the next turn, and we'll bring Sagittaria out here to meet our friendly Baryena. So even though we can't see the friendly Baryena's genetics, we should be able to still get some healthy babies out of them. I don't believe it's immunity genes F or D that Baryenas typically carry. So their babies will be strong and they won't have to worry about any illnesses either. If they have enough babies, we will definitely bring some of them down here to uh, pick up those fish. I did see one of those clown koi's scooting around very, very quickly. And then our island out here, we have some brand new babies in the nest who are going to be very helpful to uh, the future of our tribe as well. We have our Lilo with the claw, our very first clawed creature since the founders themselves. And then Piper, who was thankfully blessed by the Balance Sisters, so she should be able to help her a father and her uncle pick up the acorns. Maybe she'll even go out and try to find her own tree to set up a family. We do have quite a few littered around the island that she could use. So in the end, that's just more food for us to pick up. And since we don't have too many acorns under this tree anymore, I think she would be looking for a place where she could provide more for her own family. We do want to make sure that Leo has a baby before he passes away though, so let's set up his mutation menu in the exact same way as his brother, since they are identical twins that would probably make the most sense. We'll want to move our Lilo out of our permanent nest, maybe over to this side, and hopefully he won't catch the attention of any uh, lurking leeches. I think he should be okay, because so far they haven't been too interested in attaching to our creatures, at least not the ones over here. It's almost like there's some sort of protective force around this island. Maybe it's the family tree watching over them, who knows. But we just have uh, you back here with your extra turn, so I guess since the bunny seems to have hopped away, you might as well just pick up your grass. That way, uh, nothing can spawn around you in the meantime. And then we'll go ahead and skip the day. Watch after all of our Baryenas, of course, to make sure that each and every one of them left is still friendly. Thankfully, the one that's fully grown has decided to wander his way over to the nest, and just in time to uh, hopefully breed with Sagittaria too. So we have already placed the claw inside her mutation menu, because we definitely want to see that on more of our babies. But we should probably also try to remove the short-sighted gene, just so that doesn't end up getting spread all around our tribe. 
I'm sure any babies that come out of this pairing are going to be uh, very highly regarded. We'll want to make sure that their families continue so we can send our little hybrids out for war. If you can't beat them, then join them. And Sagittaria is taking that very, very literally right now. We do have another baby on this island though, so let's hope that she has the uh, nimble fingers. Oh my gosh, and a gorgeous mask too? Oh, we haven't seen that in quite some time. That's all thanks to Izmi again. So I guess this side of the family has really caught her favor. She's watching after her little Cracker Chaw twins from the grave. We'll name this little baby Liana. And then we'll have to send her off on a grand mission too, to hopefully colonize yet another one of those trees. I think that would be fun if we send all of our nimble-fingered creatures out in different directions, because it's pretty clear that they can defend themselves too. So before the twins do pass away, let's make sure that we have just one last baby between them. We'll bring our Lilo down to the shore, to uh, maybe scout out for some little fish that might be scooting around in the water, and to make room for his younger siblings so we can bring Luca around here to breed with Mikomi again. Then we'll have Leo pick up some of the very last of his acorns, knock down some more for his family to hopefully pick up too. Maybe little Piper because she should probably be growing her next gem on the next turn. They even have a little shell waiting for them in the uh, shallow portions of the ocean. So clearly somebody is definitely watching out for this island. And hopefully we'll be able to say the same for the creatures in the mainland too. So should we have maybe Barker and Pecan move a bit further out into the grass? They have cleared a pathway all the way to uh, the stream now. And I think we could actually use this to our advantage. If we have our creatures jump across the water, if things get really bad with the killer baryenas, then that might be a good way to lose them from our trail too. So let's have you guys try to clear out the other side of the stream. That way it'll be easier for us to uh, skip back and forth. We'll stay in our smelling vision for now just in case because with uncharted territory often comes new dangers. So far, so good though. We just have some little roots to dig up and uh, some grass to collect too, and then we should be just about ready to skip the turn. So our first Baryena baby. Cross your fingers for somebody very, very strong to keep us protected. Oh my goodness, with the giant big ears too? That is so cute. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a, such an imposing figure with those giant ears on top of her head. Certainly never on the cracker jaw before. And a five in strength. So our warrior females have returned to us. And I'm sure Izmi would be very, very proud. We'll give this baby the name Athena. So welcome to the tribe, little one. And we'll definitely want to make sure that we're setting up another baby as soon as possible. We unlocked um, some genes too, which I believe should just be the Baryena genetics. You know, the claw and whatnot. So we should be able to uh, use that to our advantage too. Hopefully our other families who aren't quite as lucky with the Baryenas, like you guys back there, maybe they'll be able to uh, put some Baryena genetics into their lines as well. Oh, this is not good for you. I had a feeling that if anybody was going to attract the Baryena's attention, it was definitely going to be them. But this is a good way for you guys to show off your strategy. Pecan, who is much weaker than his brother Barker, should be able to uh, jump the gap here, jump across the stream to get to safety. And thankfully, because the stream is shallow enough, he doesn't take any drowning damage in the process. We'll have Barker go ahead and land a good swipe on him though, and then hopefully do the same. It would actually be a good thing if the Baryena starts to chase them back to the tribe, because then some of our stronger creatures can lend them a hand. On their own, they probably wouldn't be able to take the Baryena down. So let's bring Grindylo up to the north as well. He knows all about attacking Baryenas, so he can lend them his experience. Now Sagittaria, you can uh, finally breed again with the Baryena. 
And then we'll want to make sure that this uh, mole isn't looking at you, Zara, as you hopefully try to scoop it up. I think this side would be the safest one for you to go on, so you can sit high atop the bunny burrow as you scoop up the mole from behind. We are starting to run a little bit low on our food supplies again, so we want to make sure we have what we need to support our new babies. Bean is a little bit preoccupied at the moment as he tries to continue luring the Baragina up toward the main tribe. So far it seems to be working. The Baragina has definitely taken a shining to little Bean. He's pretty good at making friends with the wildlife. And now our final baby of the Cracker Jaw line. It looks like she doesn't have the claw, so she is a little bit weaker than her siblings, but she does still have the nimble fingers, so she could also set up underneath one of those very distant trees. Maybe in fact she would want to have our Lilo come with her, so he could at least protect her with his claw. But we'll name this little baby Biba, and then we'll get to work sending all of their daughters off to the mainland. First, they'll need to just prepare for the journey, make sure that they're strong enough to jump across the waves. So we'll have Piper go ahead and pick up what acorns she can, as Mikomi picks up her nest and sits next to her daughters to make sure that nothing picks them off either. I suppose our Lilo could be the first one to set his feet in the water and then jump back up to dry land so we can scout ahead for his sister. We'll have Liana make her way out of the nest too to sit next to her big sister Piper because something tells me she would want to uh, crack open the acorns with as much skill as Piper can. She probably wants to be just like her big sister when she grows up. And we should be ready to skip the turn too. So let's see if our second Baryina baby is going to have just as much luck as our first. Oh, that cracker jaw again. That looks so cool with the big ears. And she has the claw too, instead of her mother's digging paw. So I guess that means that our mutation menu worked in our favor. How strong is she actually? A six in attack strength? All right, that is exactly what we need to uh, help you guys out. So let's see how much longer the spare Yina has on his lifespan. We have 11 days. So I think you guys might actually be able to take the Baragina down entirely. If we have Barker use his last turn to swipe the Baragina again, then we'll scoot Pecan over to the side to make room for Grindilo, who can really lay into the Baryina too. Then Pecan, you can use one of your turns to swipe one last time at this Baryina and then pick up all of that delicious meat for your family. Just enough to uh, keep us alive. In fact, I think we might actually want to uh, hold off on having some more babies for now so we can set up our families under their trees and increase our food stores first. Then Sagittaria can train her little army of Baryina hybrids in the meantime. We'll bring Athena out of the nest, take her first steps out into this uh, dark and gloomy world. We'll have to figure out where we want them to head off to as well. With their cracker jaws, they could also uh, pick up those acorns. So maybe we'll have them move toward this tree. And then uh, Piper and her family, well, that tree is kind of far away for them to get to, but I suppose that could be their family's goal. The more ground we cover after all, the easier it'll be for us to gather up the food that we need. Oh, and look at that. It looks like our Baryina is actually uh, making his way across the stream too. Maybe you want to follow your friendly Baryina little guy? It seems like he may have found something. Oh, look at this. He must have actually taken down a Dodomingo, or he was just drawn here by the scent of the meat. But either way, this is not the sort of thing Bean wants to see. His Dodomingo family getting picked off one by one. Bean is going to have a lot of trouble coping with that. But their presence does mean that we might have another permanent nest out here. So that's all the better for our families over on their islands because it means they might have a good home to uh, use pretty soon. Now Piper, why don't you come over here and join your brother? Because it would be a good idea for one of you to set up on top of this stump. Oh my gosh, that actually terrified me for a moment, but I'm pretty sure that's just our friendly Baryina. 
All right, the father to Athena and our new baby too. We almost forgot to name her. The next name on my list is Sonia. So welcome to the tribe, little one, as the strongest warrior that we currently have in our ranks. Now, Leanna should be able to finally pick up her acorns too, just like her big sister. And I just realized it looks like she has muddy little feet, a mud mask, and uh, dirty toes from all this rain, perhaps. She must enjoy splashing around in the mud. We'll bring Mikomi over to this side so she can still knock down more acorns for her children. In fact, I wonder if a uh, little Biba might like to stay back here with her mother. Maybe Mikomi could even use her running leg to pick some of the poison berries, but not just yet. We don't want her passing away before her baby will be safe on her own. And it looks like our friendly bear Yina might just have a meal to hopefully snag up. There we go. Oh no, but he ate it too. Oh, that's disappointing. I was hoping that our Lilo might be able to swoop in and grab it for his family. But I guess our friendly Berienas need to eat too, if we want them to stay healthy as well. So now would probably be a good time for us to decide which of the males are going to breed with all of these females that we have in the tribe now. We'll have to take a look at their immunity genes and see which ones would make a better match. Biba and Liana could definitely both start families with um, Grindilo and Barker. Their immunity genes line up very well. So perhaps we'll want to bring them down the western shores, over to the tree by our second friendly bear Yina and the Dodomingos right by the stream too, where they were hoping to clear a pathway. So that should be a good way for them to all meet up together, as long as uh, there's no more dangers in the grass for them to be made aware of. So far, just tons and tons of bunnies, so at least we know there's lots of uh, food for them to eat. I think the bluebird may have just found another meal of his own. It's not any of our babies though. Everybody looks to be uh, completely safe for now. So keep moving into the tall grass, and pretty soon you guys will have your new home too. I think we may have also unlocked the uh, big nose in our mutation menu. There it is, from clearing out all of that tall grass. So we'll have to see if we can place that into theirs. So hopefully their babies will be better at smelling. And Piper and our Lilo can start making the long, long journey over to the opposite shore. A much more treacherous journey, in fact because this runs the risk of uh, running them straight into the killer Perina that we all know and love. So let's see what trouble they can get themselves into. I feel like they will definitely need to enlist the help of some stronger creatures. So I suppose it would be a good chance for our uh, Baragina hybrids to get their taste of freedom too. Unfortunately, they both do share immunity genes with basically every single male in the tribe right now. So we don't have anybody to breed them safely with yet. But this would be, again, a good way to just test their abilities. That way they'll know that they're uh, ready for adventure too. Sonya is going to take a little bit longer to grow up. So we'll bring her down here to uh, watch Sagittaria pick the berries, make sure they all have enough food for the journey. And then we might bring uh, Zara down this way to pick up some more of those roots. As yeah, another uh, bluebird seems to be squawking in the skies. All right, they're leading us off this way. I wonder if that does mean that we'll run into more wanderers. I guess there's only one way to find out. Either uh, the Baragina is leaving food behind like breadcrumbs, or we'll find a big family already settled underneath that tree. Oh, and there is another permanent nest up here. You can always trust your Dodomingo friends to lead you to a new nest. So, Mikomi, with some of your final turns, I think we're going to have you sacrifice yourself to the toxic berry bushes. It won't be in vain, though. This will be a great way for us to continue trying to unlock the toxic body, which we will need to pick from these berries safely. So you have given us some wonderful warriors, some excellent acorn crackers, and now your final gift to the tribe will be the greatest one of all, helping us survive another day in the Deadly Hills. So it will be sad to say goodbye to Mikomi, but we know that, um, oh dear. That was an awful lot of noise out there. 
Well, we know that her daughters are going to be able to carry on her legacy. But first, I need to see what on earth is making all that noise. Oh, we have another wanderer out here. Somebody was already living underneath this tree. And they're very, very shy. So let's see if you guys can maybe catch up to him. I think it was a male, right? It was kind of hard to see with all the grass in the way, but it looks like he probably has a mane. That spiky body would be an excellent thing for us to take into our tribe too. Something to uh, keep us a little bit more protected against all of the Baryina's attacks. I was hoping this guy might scoot out to say hello, but he is being a little bit shy. I think he's actually trying to uh, dig up the root that he's sitting on. Oh, he has the most adorable pink spikes and a pink mane too. It looks like his fertility is pretty rotten and his eyesight isn't great either. But his two new immunity genes would be a great way for us to potentially breed our Baryena hybrids because we do need to find them a safe mate as well. So why don't we go ahead and uh, use a little bit of our last food on this guy? Oh, I didn't realize that we were getting quite so low. Okay, you guys really need to uh, hurry up and find some more food for us to eat then. We might have to have you two stay here a tiny, tiny bit longer. At least until we collect our bearings again. And our Lilo is already well on his way. There we go, little guy. Finding more food for your sister to eat as she picks up the uh, shells in the water. So let's see if they can maybe sense the killer Baryina. Like again, it's been so long that he may have actually passed away by now. We know that he was up here toward the medicines, so they might be safe just to stay on the shore until they finally hit this tree. That also means that our hybrids might actually have to split off now because we want one to stay up here to hopefully breed with Kiro, but we still need somebody else to uh, help protect our explorers. So I think Athena is going to be the one to join this group. And then Sonya, since her fertility is a little bit better, will be the one to uh, join everybody else by the tree on the western side of the island. It must be awfully sad for the siblings and for their mother as well to watch all of her babies split off in different directions, leaving the nest far behind them. But at least she knows she can always have a few more babies because she still has quite a bit of life left on her yet. We have the second Baryina that somebody could definitely breed with too, just to increase our chances of breeding some true hybrid babies into our nests. And oh my goodness, Kiro, you are just calling the bunnies toward you one by one. Our wanderer has a few more tricks up his sleeve than we realized but a line of hunters is probably the best thing that we could do for our tribe right now. So before we end out the episode, we'll go ahead and skip the day just one last time to see how our explorers might fare and to see if there's any more dangers for our tribe to conquer in the next episode. So yet again, our warrior brothers Barker and Grindylo have found themselves staring down a Baryina. And this one unfortunately does not have any friendly little cubs for us to take in but it should have uh, quite the meal for our tribe once they do take it down. I am very curious to see what Athena and Piper and our Lilo are going to find, if they'll stumble their way into that killer Baryina that they've heard so many stories about, or if maybe they'll even find another healer's glade for our creatures to use to heal their wounds. There has to be some reason why those bluebirds are hovering high up in the skies. Either we have a lot of food, a lot of resources, or maybe some new blood to take into our ranks. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!